Hi, welcome back to Dog Sport. I'm Stu. This is my 1958 Prefect with a Ford Pinto turbo setup. And uh, today I'm just doing a load of uh, little buggy jobs that were meant to be done after I'd done the first start. But if you watched the last video, you know I wasn't able to do that today. So cracking on with some other stuff instead. So I have this list of jobs for random little bits and pieces that I need to get done. And they're jobs I've decided that can either be done here before the car goes back to Steve Walford's or over there once the car's there for other work. They're little jobs that I can sort of crack on while Steve's doing the bits that I can't do. But unfortunately, they're the only jobs I've got to do at the moment. So uh, we're going to knock out a few of those. First thing I think I'm going to do is add the plug onto the speed sender. Um, one of the things I did wrong when I made the loom originally was wired the speed sensor directly to the gauge and didn't actually put a plug in the middle. So when I had to take the engine out, I had to cut that wire, cut it in a place where I can put a plug on, so I couldn't do that now. Thankfully I thought ahead and once I got the gear out of the car, I did put a plug on that side. So I just need to put one on those three loose wires now. That's one quick job done, on to the next. What I think I'm going to do next is uh, what I've got listed as coolant bracket and that's a little bracket for one of the hard lines I made in the engine bay. So this hard line I made for the coolant reroute, uh, it, well, it's actually wedged in place by that o-ring at the moment. But it's a, it floats around a little bit so the plan is just down there off the engine mount I'm going to put a little bracket that just wraps around that line. And that then's just going to keep it a little bit more secure, stop it from bouncing around and uh, make sure I don't run into any issues with it. I started off designing a uh, you know, really nice bracket, it was just going to wrap around it, it's all going to be really fancy and you know nice and then I realised that's a load of effort that I don't need to do. A nice little simple bracket with a couple of cable ties would do nicely. So that hose now is absolutely solid. Still got my little anti-abrasion grommet. But yeah, so that's, uh, that's done that job nicely. Happy with that. Another job off the list. Next job up then is the throttle cable. So uh, I'd got the routing sorted out before, but never actually fitted the cable. And uh, as I think I've shown in a previous video, I modified the pedal box now to, uh, to, to fit the throttle cable. And so I'm gonna get that fitted now. Well, I could do some better washers to sit either side of the bracket, but uh, they will do. And just need to get a nipple on the end of there now. I've actually got the one that I used previously stored somewhere safe. Um, so I will dig that out and put that on at some point, but uh, not going to worry about that too much now. The car doesn't even start yet. So um, yeah, another little job ticked off the list. The job I've been putting off for a while, but it needs to be done um, i am going to mot this car so um it's got to have two wipers to be able to pass the mot the single wiper setup just um i don't think i'll cut it so going to remove the blanking plates and uh, start looking at fitting the second wiper box and the washer jet should have probably shown you this before i took it off but um, for those who want to make, there was a, a blanking plate here and another one here uh, you can see there's a little discoloration in the paint around there i have just given that a quick polish um this one oh. the one that was here though um the discoloration's a bit worse there's a bit of a ripple in the paint um have polished that as well but it's not quite lifting the discoloration out most of that's going to be covered by putting the stuff back in so uh should be all right i think today's really not going well <clears throat> so uh Obviously, not only did I have the fuel leaks that were in the last video this morning, um, just fitted, well, just mocked up the wipers, and uh, I seem to have made an error. There is a problem in this picture, and it's not that one is chrome and one is black. Yeah, the black one is the new one, and um, I ordered the wrong handy. So I now have two useless black wiper arms. Go me! Back out working on the car and today uh, I'm working on the fuel system yet again but now I've got the new fuel rail and I've got the olives needed to fix the hard lines. So I bought a kit from um, Emerald, the ECU manufacturer who uh, supplied me with a um, aluminium extrusion and the fittings for the end of it for the new fuel rail and that's all now been drilled and tapped so I've got that fuel rail made up with the injectors fitted 
The only thing I'm going to do now is make some brackets from the little tapped threads that we added here and here. And just going to try and pick up on the original mounting points on the intake to secure that then down. So that's what I'm going to be working on this morning. I will update you as I go. So just chuck that into the old inlet manifold for marking up purposes. And the way I wanted to see it kind of like that to pick up from here back to these mounting points, which actually sit further back than I was expecting. That's frustrating. Uh, it shouldn't be too much of a problem, but just got to work out exactly how I'm going to do that now. And then once I've marked it up on here, I can transfer it over onto the car. And then we're almost there. Change of plan, other than unnecessarily complicated brackets. That hole lines up, I'm not sure how easily you're going to see it down there, but almost perfectly with that one. And it's the same for the other one. So actually little straps down to the bolts that hold it to the head. Looking like they're going to be the winners here. So uh, mock up those instead. Okay, got the first bracket just roughly made up. Needs obviously the edges trimming and so forth. But uh, yeah, that works really nice. I think that's going to look decent as well. So that one's yeah basically done. Just need to do another one now from there down to that one. And then I'll take them both off and tidy them up. So... Please how that's come out, um, it's a bit fiddly, but uh, looks like it's going to work really nicely. Okay, got the tight down brackets made, they're not the prettiest things I've ever made, but they're functional and they're not really going to be seen, so I'm happy with them. So that's the first one I made, just tied that edge up, haven't done that bolt back up properly, so obviously it's not pulling in quite as it should. And then that's the second one I made, uh, it's not the same material, because I don't have enough of that strip to make two out of, but um, yeah, it'll do. So they'll work, they'll, uh, they'll do the job as I want them to. Just got to get them onto the car now. Before I do that though, I've also got to repair the hard line for the return. Uh, I've got the new olives to do that. And then it's just case of doing everything up and pressure testing again and hoping nothing leaks. Fingers crossed. Everything is now connected back up in the bay. I've repaired the hard lines uh, for the return, both in the bay and in the... Um, cockpit area of the car hopefully now it's not going to leak anywhere so um time to pressure test the lines for the time's the charm right good news is no leaks heard the uh regulator pressurize twice and then uh don't know how well you can see that but fully blew the pump off the feed managed to square through a good six foot but uh so, but that's good news. It means now I've just now got to secure the pump onto that hanger properly, which I think is just a missing Jubilee clip. A couple of pre-flight checks, and then we're good to try for a first start. But I've got time for that right now. You know, sorry, I've got five minutes. I'm just gonna hook up the injectors, give it a go. I really am out of time, uh, so plan is now one day next to get out here, laptop out here, check the crank signal. Um, probably got the wires backwards, sort those out, should fire up, fingers crossed. We'll see. A little bit later, I am back out now working on the car for a little while, and um, I've had a couple of thoughts. <clears throat> There's probably there are probably just two things that this can be why I didn't just start straight away. Uh, the crank signal wires could be backwards because when the loom got burnt, I lost which one went where on the plug. The other thing that it could be is the um, same issue, but on the spot plug wires, that the coil pack pins are backwards. Or should I say, I've plugged the plugs in the wrong way around because I couldn't remember which way around the plugs went on the coil pack. So uh, easiest one of those to swap is the coil plug lead. So we'll swap those around, give it another go. So close. It looks like I'd wired the alternator up wrong and uh, in doing so, killed my battery. And then my battery charger. So yeah, that's interesting. Um, won't be able to have another go at starting it now. 
I hope it is that I, well, I did alternate it wrong. I hope I've diagnosed that right. Otherwise, I'm going to kill another battery when I get around to trying that. Balls. So it's not so much that the alternator was hooked up wrong. It is more a case of that uh, the alternator main battery lead was able to short out. So I'm not sure where you can see this, but I can get my hand in there, which is going to be difficult. Okay, so... Here's your main battery lead, and you can see how it's rubbing up against there. It looks like that managed to rub through and um, short out. And in the process, it looks like in shorting out, that's uh, killed my battery. So, and then subsequently killed the battery charger. Not a good day for battery related things, but um, Again, at least I found it now, not out on the road, etc. and etc. <sighs> Just gotta, you know, fix it now. Back out here working again on the car, and uh, the new battery has arrived. And um, the immobiliser setup I've got just doesn't seem to want to disable. Um, so, because I want to see how things going to run, I'm going to uh, bypass the immobiliser because I know how, because I wired it. And uh, we're going to hot wire it and see what happens. Okay, here goes. Well, it runs and uh, on all four now as well, so uh, yeah, happy days. So on that moment of success, I think it's time to call it for another video. As always, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell next to it. Catch you next time.